Hey guys, what's up? My name is Grace, better known as Grace Mag, and yeah, welcome to Hope on Deck. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Hope on Deck. <laughs> so this is a new show that we're doing where we get to meet people, uh, talk about their lives, and see life from a different perspective or from a different lens. So for this very first episode, we are very privileged to have one of my great friend. Uh, we have known each other for three years and we have been serving in the same church and in the same ministry almost to, I guess, two years. But before we call her out, we'll see whether she is worthy to be on our show. Let's go. All right, let me guess this song. I think this is desert song. Okay, this song's very familiar. Ah, I know this song. You know what? This is one of my favorite songs that I listened to recently for many times. This is uh, from JPCC, uh, More Than Enough. Wait, to, to the end? Oh my god, this song I listened to before as well. Or ever be. Oh, I definitely don't know this song. I don't think I listened to it before. Here again. Oh, I really can't remember this. Oh, this one I know. I just count too hard. Grace Talk is deemed worthy to be on our show. Let's start the interview session. So, can you share something about yourself with us? Um, I'm purely a Penang Knight. No, I'm, I'm proud to be a Penang Knight. Okay, uh, I was born in um, Vien, as I want to mention just now. But at that time, um, we were staying at Kulin Sada. Okay, then we moved to um, BM, moved to mainland, and now it's Penang Island. No, I studied in um, both uh, primary, two primary schools. Okay, one in Kulin and one in uh, mainland, uh, BM. Then I studied in SMK Prapit, and I think some of you know uh, which school is this. You know that um, I actually represented, okay, some, um, many of you may not know that I actually represented my primary and secondary school um, for badminton competition. And I even won the uh, the third place, if I'm not mistaken. You know, I also represented uh, my school, my secondary school, um, to compete in javelin. Okay, in Malay, they call it as slumbing. You know, I get to experience many new things during my secondary school. The javelin itself, you know, it's one of the sports that I love the most at the time. You know that uh, my coach actually um, taught me how to, uh, the technique on how to play and actually um, trained me um, to be representative for my school as well. So, yeah, it was fun, you know, get to experience new things and the whole team, you know, especially when the whole team went for competition together and we had so much fun together and one of the things that I think we enjoyed the most is um, skip class at that time, you know, back then because you don't have to attend class, right? You have competitions, then you can just go to the competitions and have fun with, with the team. Then, after that, I actually studied at um, Star College in Penang. You know, for my diploma, I continued to pursue my diploma and then a um, degree in Star Kampa. Okay, then I, after that, I decided to continue with my master in Australia. So it's my privilege um, getting to you know, go to different places, to experience um, different culture and to learn new things as well. Okay, what's my favorite pastime? Um, I would say that it was the time when my mom and I actually um, did gardening together, you know, at our old house uh, when we were staying um, in Bukit Matajam in Mainland. Um, we had a small garden back then uh, in my house and, you know, every school holiday, I would help my mom, you know, to do some gardening. And if you know, right, those um, red brick at the roadside, you know, the pedestrian there, right, at the roadside, you have, you see the red brick where they used to form a pedestrian 
that's something that we actually collect. You know, we used to, me and my mom, we used to collect a lot. And we used to take out, you know, all the soy, you know, in our, our garden and arrange the brick together to make it nicely. That was actually my, my, my favorite time with, you know, my family. And, you know, like when we grew up, right, you know, at times, um, we get so busy with work and we have, we have actually um, less time to accompany them and, you know, when I now think back, it, it's actually a good, um, it was a, my favorite pastime, I would say, okay, which is to spend time with my um, family. Mm, this is something that I find it interesting when I think back. You know, initially, that I, I didn't plan to study IT, but um, I chose business uh, administration instead. Okay, the uh, diploma in business administration. But back then, my dad actually rejected and asked me to study IT. Okay, because he thinks that IT has a better future. And I was like, okay, you know, um, because at that time, you no, know, I was still young, right? And I don't know much about future yet. You know what's good, good for me. But was good for you know, my family as well. So yeah, until now, you know, I'm still working in IT related field. And you no, know, my like what I mentioned just now, right? That we I, I didn't plan to go to Australia. Australia. My dad actually asked me to go to UK instead because my my elder brother was there at that time. You know, instead of Australia. But I don't want to because of the flight hours to UK. You know, imagine sitting on a plane for like thirty plus hours, you know, including transit. But Australia it only takes like eight hours flight from Penang. No, including transit. So for eight hours to me personally, I think it's actually quite long for my for me. You no, know, because I I couldn't sleep on a plane. No, imagine staying awake and doing nothing for eight hours in plane. So so that's why I I, I chose Australia at that time. So now that I think back, it's actually God's plan. You know, like what I shared, I chose to study in Australia. You know, at the time that I, I applied for a few um, universities. But only one accepted me, which is um, QUT, Queensland University of Technology in Brisbane, Australia. No, I went to Brisbane alone uh, in 2012 you know, to continue my studies there. And during the first day of orientation week, you know, in, in Malaysia, we hardly get to experience um, a big campus you know, with um, different booths, a lot of booths set up you know, during the orientation, right? So during the first day orientation uh, week, right, in my uni in Australia, you know, I, of course, I have to settle some you know, school fees and have to collect my student ID, right? So I was walking around the campus, you know, enjoying myself, looking at the building, uh, exploring different booths. And at the time, there were a lot of books set up around the campus. You know, the campus is very big. So I was exploring at different booths, you know, at the time uh, with a new friend, okay, which I just met. Um, it's also Malaysian, okay, when I collect my um, student ID, I, I, I met her at that time. And when we were walking around, right, suddenly a, a, a student, okay, um, approached me, you know, which is now my best friend, and we are actually now serving in the same church, okay, and she actually um, explained to me, okay, uh, about her club, you know, called uh, CCM, Campus Christian Movement, okay, which is a Christian club. And then she asked, you know, if I, I want to join their weekly activities you know, on Friday or Sunday. And on Saturday itself, they have also um, a, a huge activity, a huge event. Okay, at that time, I rejected her many times. But I, I, I don't know why. I, I do leave my contact um, number to her. So she tried to invite me um, to their weekly activities. You know, many times through message, you know, through call, asking me, you really don't join us? You know, like something like this, you no, know, she even cooked lunch for me, you know. Like at the time I was like, Wow, why got such um no good person that um quick cook um free lunch, you no, know, for people. But somehow I rejected her uh, most of the time, you know, that I, I rejected her not to join the activities. And you know, because I'm an introvert, okay, and it's comfortable for me to, to stay with myself, okay, alone. But until a point that she asked me again and I felt, I was like, okay, I will just attend, you know, like, it's, it's not good to reject people out too many times, right? So, I decided to join them on the Friday activity. So, I attended and, you know, surprisingly, I had a lot of fun. You know, I get to know uh, many friends, you know, from different countries, you know, knowing their culture. And after joining the activities for, I think, nearly a month, okay, so I attended the, the Sunday service as well at the church, Okay. So during one of the um, Sunday service, I suddenly cried during the praise and worship session. And I have no idea 
what what happened what's ha- what happened to me you know then to be an asian okay an asian i, I could wipe off my my tears you know because i think that it was so embarrassing you know to cry in front of so many people and right you being an asian but one one of the leaders actually saw me cry and she approached me after the Sunday service okay after the church service and she shared with me about you know god you know who is this god that they are praising they are worshiping and at that time i was so touched and i decided to accept christ and from there um i never regret you no know, of my all my decisions even until now and throughout this journey um of course you know um there are a lot of ups and downs a lot of challenges in life but i truly truly thank god and praise god for every single encounter that i had with you know, even the challenges too you know because this is what um challenges is what uh, moved me to be a better person know to love people to care for people I work in one of the companies in the industry area okay um it's in Bali La Paz in Penang uh, as a program analyst and basically doing all those um IT stuff the programming database related stuff so after 10 months right I I decided to change job again you know to another company as programmer as well um at the time actually I I really don't enjoy what I was doing you know those IT things you no know, I was forcing myself to uh, to go to work every day to continue working there because of uh, salary and I even got the chance to go for business trip in, in Singapore you know which you know like business trip and most the company will pay for all your expenses right you no know? but I, I I just I just felt something is missing No, I didn't enjoy it at all. Even I, I, I was um, sent to, I was asked to go for business trip. No, then after some time, then I, I decided to quit the second job. And at the time, I was jobless for four months. And to me, it was not easy because of the stress. You know, from different ones asking, you know, why, why do you quit that job, <clears throat> high pay job? You no, know? um, why are you jobless right now? This and that. A lot of questions going around. And I took this four months to to really pray and really seek God for direction. And you no know, one day that um when I pray, you no, know, I decided to move into education field. Okay, not because I I want to, but I believe it's God's plan um, for me. Okay, and the passion for the the young generation as well, the the students. And yeah, I applied for many colleges, you know, and universities, but. I did not receive any news, you know, from them, from any colleges or universities for the first three months. You know, you imagine um, you applied for so many jobs, but you didn't receive any news, any calls or interview for three months. You know, um, <clears throat> and I think mainly it's because um, I have no teaching experience. And but back then I didn't, I didn't give up. You know, I continue to pray, I continue to to look, look for jobs, and finally, you know, in the fourth month of being jobless. I received calls from uh, two colleges. Okay, um, they went for interview, uh, and one of you actually rejected me. Okay, which I find uh, it's okay because you no, know, maybe I, I have no teaching experience, so they have no confidence in me as well. And great, really thank God, you no, know, praise God that another college actually hired me as a lecturer. You no, know, which is where I'm, I'm working right now. Okay, so. So yeah, that's what I basically do, you know, after um, coming back to to Malaysia. Hmm, okay, interesting. Um, many people actually ask me these questions. You know, why why were you willing to to move from a developer or programmer, you know, being a developer or programmer, which you get um, higher pay, or similarly, you know, than to be an educator? Which the pay is actually so much uh, lower, okay. Um, to me itself, it's one. The first thing itself, I would say, is uh, passion. Um, it's always my my passion, my desire to no motivate to disciple the the younger generation. Okay, especially students, you know, to see them success in life. Well, not only in terms of earning more money, okay, but uh, I think finding their discovering their life purpose. Which I think this is the most important things um for young generations nowadays, and I believe you no, know, we have heard that the the 
um, young generation always complain right about their teachers, you not know, only teaching for the sake of teaching. Um, I myself, I was a student, <laughs> and I, I actually did the same, and so I understand all these things. And as an educator or lecturer, I believe I can do my part, you know, as an educator to make a difference. And to be honest, my my goal is not um, only to teach subjects, you know, in college and get my, my get my money paid or salary but also to care for, for the students and to help them to move um, forward and move towards real working environments and make an impact too. And I believe it's the passion and desire that you know, um, God has placed in my heart. And I chose to obey, even at, at the time, you know, I feel as well, because I have no teaching experience and um, this is, I have no teaching experience and I really um, afraid as well. But this is the reason why I decided to move into education field and I see the need, you know, the need, the need to, to reach out to this, um, the, uh, this community, these young generations, you know, to help them to discover their life purpose, to understand uh, what they are experiencing right now. And um, to me, another reason is I believe um, money cannot buy joy. Right? If you have a lot of money, but you, you, you won't be able to buy joy. Okay, when you have passion, you will find joy in whatever that you do. No, of course, you no, know, there will be um, there will still be stress, you no, know, unhappy things happen. But you know, this is life, right? Every sing, everyone will have um, have um, challenges in life, have those unhappy things happen in life. Even if you are a millionaire, right? These things still happen. But because you know your goal and you know what you are doing is not for yourself. Like I know, like right now, I know what I'm doing, whether teaching, coaching the students, no, it's not for myself. No, it's for them. It's for the students, it's for the next generation, it's actually for God. No, it's for myself. So when you think about this, right, um, it's actually worthwhile after all. You know, during the stressful time and things, it's really worthwhile after all. And my family did not actually agree for me to work as an educator because of um, the pay. You no, know, it's, it's actually quite low compared to other other jobs. But I still decided to go for it um, because I know it's God's purpose for me. You know, of course, um, I honor my parents. You know, I love them. I love my family, and I also believe that this is an opportunity um, for them to see the difference. You no, know, not only getting high pay. Uh, that you that you will success, okay? Then you will success. But following God's view, working in God's purpose, we will prosper too. This is something that I hold on to, and this is something um that actually uh, brought me to the point of you not know, taking a step of faith to 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 have a career change to change my uh, career path. How has life been different? I will put this into three words: you no know, courage, um, joyful, and also purposeful. I would say, okay, courage to try new things, no matter what it takes, because you you, you know um, you have a passion, you know the uh, what God wants you to do. You no, know, no, with that, I, I I can actually learn a lot of things that I have never tried before. No, basically, um, I have nothing to lose. No, if I make mistake, I learn. No, and um, joyful because you no, know, I really enjoy what I'm doing right now. No, although of course, um, sometimes um, there'll be stress. You no, know, it is quite stressful, but I, I still enjoy what I'm doing. You know, get to spend time with students, um, listening to their concerns. You know, sometimes have some counseling sessions with um, students to help them to go through tough times. I think this is something that I really enjoy a lot. And the third one is purposeful, which um, you have the determination or the desire to achieve a goal. You know, you can actually, with this, right, you can actually um, move forward with a clearer vision. So, um, to me, um, these are the three things that actually um, make a difference. Okay, I see the difference um, when I, I start working with God's purpose. These are the three elements that uh, what I'm experiencing right now. 
you know like every day right now right every day wake up you no know, get ready to work this is something that i look forward to which is very rare um to hear from people saying that you no know, every 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 morning you wake up you are you are so eager to go to work but this is something that i'm um, truly from my heart that i really um, so eager to go to work every day because i get to meet my colleagues my students you know, uh, get to spend time with them So lastly, what would you like to deliver to our audience who are listening? Um, I would say um, discover. You no, know, if you are students right now, right, discover your life purpose. Even when we are a student now, you no, know, start early to discover. And I, I know that nowadays, you no, know, a lot of people uh, will say that you no, know, um, in order to to be successful, you have to earn a lot of money. But to me, successful does not um, equal to earning more money than other people. Money is important, you know. We, we can't deny that. Um, we, we need it for our daily living, but it's not everything. You know, to me, what is important is um, learn as much as you can. Of course, not only for your exam, you know, for you to pass and get uh, good grades, you no, know, but also for your future. And one thing that I would really um, encourage, you know, students is to take the step of Um, courage and faith to try new things, because from there, right, if you get to try new things, then you actually slowly discover your passion. Okay, and every everyone will struggle with different things. You know, definitely, every single one of of us, you know, will, will have our own difficult time. But that is what makes us grow, right? You know, we learn before, and then we move forward. And some of you may ask, like, may ask me, like, how how do I discover my life purpose? Um, let me ask you. Ask you. Uh, let me give you questions. Okay. Let me give you questions to ponder. Um, know who do you look to when you need help? You know who do you look to when when you you are stressed? You know when when you have challenges when you are in a difficult time. Who do you look to? And what motivates you um, when you are facing challenges? This is important because um, this is the question that I always ask myself. You know who do I look up to? Um, you no, know, when I'm really stressed, you no, know, when I really um, face challenges, and this will actually change our perspective. You no, know, to me, I always take time to pray, you know, to, to seek God um, for for peace, you know, for wisdom. And a lot of people nowadays will say that you no, know, if if I have money, I can do many things. You no, know, it's very common. It, it's the thing that uh, it's a common topic that people will discuss. You no, know, even in uh, among students. But um, have you ever thought, right? If you have um, a lot of money, the one thing that you have to ask yourself is, do you feel joyful? I think something that um, you guys have to know is um, joy is different from happiness. You know, joy, joy, joy comes from internal uh, feeling, which will last long. But happiness could arise. You know, when when let's say for example, you receive a uh, present, you receive gift from your friends or from family, or even encouragement words, and happiness could be short term. You know, and at this season, a moment, you know, we may we may not study what we like, okay? We may not study what we like. We may not, um, if you're working part time, you know, perhaps um, you have no choice. You have to work part time. You know, we may not work at a, our favorite workplace. Because even when I just started my job, right? Um, when I just started uh, this job, you know, as a lecturer, I struggled too, because um, I'm like how I told you guys, I'm an introvert, right? Um. It's actually um, I'm very fearful to speak in front of many people. I'm really not good at public speaking, and at plus I have no teaching experience. You know, you can imagine that um, I have industrial experience, but I have no teaching experience. Going to a class of you have around um thirty students, and you have to teach them. So I really find it so tough. But as I continue to 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 seek God, you know, I begin to find that. Uh, peace and that purpose, you know, to do what I'm doing. So whether whether I struggle or enjoy things, right, the first one that I always look to, at I always look to is God. You know, I always give thanks to God that He is the one who blessed me with you know, what I have right now. And so yeah, you no, know, I would say that you no, know, do not let let success or failure define you, because you know each one of us 
are fearfully and wonderfully created by God. Yeah, I think this is something that um, I will not say advice, but this is something that I will actually um, encourage you guys to um, think through as well, you know, as, as students, as a young generation.